Hi, I'm Rocco Steno, and welcome to the campaign edition of Storymakers. And we have Lila Sales with us, and she's going to be talking about her book, The Campaign. Welcome, Lila. Hi, Rocco. Thank you so much for having me. Your book, The Campaign, is about an election campaign, right? Yeah, so it's about a 12-year-old girl who finds out that the only person who's running to become mayor of her town in the fall plans to defund arts education. And our main character, her name is Maddie. She loves art. It's the only thing at school that she likes. Uh, so she decides that she needs to stop this bad guy from getting elected to be mayor of her town. So Maddie then winds up becoming the campaign manager for her babysitter's campaign. So Lila, what inspired you to write this book? So I have always been involved in politics, never professionally, but ever since a young age, I was just really interested in them. Like I was a little kid and my parents would take me to marches and stuff. When I was in third grade, I learned about petitions. You can say something that you want changed and then you gather a bunch of signatures to it. And if you have a lot of signatures to that, you present it to the people in power and you say like, look, like the whole community wants this changed. So what I wanted changed in third grade was our language arts textbook. Uh, it was like, it was a vocabulary textbook. It was very boring I really didn't like it. Uh, so I started a petition to uh, no longer use this language arts textbook. And I got everyone in my class to sign it because we all thought it was boring. But then I gave the petition to our third grade teacher and she tore it up in front of my face. When you say that you want to change and you're presenting that to the people in positions of authority, sometimes they're not going to agree with you right away. And if you have a petition, you should always make a photocopy out of it. So I'm sure that the campaign for mayor is not as big as the campaign for president, but there are many similarities. And you were mentioning, you know, the campaign manager. What are some of the areas that a campaign manager has to be uh, worried about? She has to think about preparing Janet for the debates that Janet's going to have against her opponent. And she has to help Janet figure out what her platform is. That means what are all the variety of different issues that Janet is going to come out in support of. She needs to plan rallies for Janet and make sure that there are other speakers at those rallies and that there are going to be people in attendance at those rallies. One of the very first things she has to do as campaign manager is just get enough signatures from people who live in the town in order to even get Janet's name on the ballot. So she goes through each of these different steps and along the way she gets help from a bunch of other kids in her class at her middle school who all have their own reasons why they want to get involved with local politics and make sure that Janet becomes the mayor. Many campaigns have a campaign slogan, you know, like, I like Ike which was for President Eisenhower. If I were going to do a slogan for Janet, it probably would be Janet, the best candidate on the planet. What do you think? In the book, the slogan is just Janet for the future, because it's all kids who are working on her campaign. Um, but future doesn't rhyme with Janet and planet does. So maybe <laughs> if I ever get to rewrite the book, I'll put in, I'll put a Janet best of the planet. What are some of the other departments in the campaign. Janet is like the candidate for kids and for art. And so all the kids who are coming to work in her campaign are artists in various ways. They're, you know, they play music or they do theater or they dance or they paint or whatever it is. And so then they're able to use all of those artistic skills and passions that they have in order to try and help Janet get elected. So there's a whole graphic design department and those are the people who are designing the posters, like I have one behind me here, and buttons and t-shirts and so on and so forth. And that's really good for the kids who are visual artists. And then they're, as I said, they're putting together these rallies for Janet to get everybody excited. And so they have the school band play at the rallies. They have the girl who's the best at uh, drama. She's like the star in all the school plays. She helps Janet with her speaking style and poise so that when she gets up and speaks in front of a crowd at a rally, she's gonna be giving a really good talk and everybody's going to be interested in what she has to say. There are videographers and social media managers. Somebody is coding a website for her. Let's ask our viewers which committee they would want to be on for a campaign. 
I know which one I would want to be on. First, I would have a campaign hat and wear my candidate's name on my head. And I would like to be a videographer and take video and use my phone to take photos and push them out on social media. And what would you like to do? Viewers, let us know in the comments below. And Lila, what would you like to do? I think I would like to do some design work so you can see I made this poster back here. I'm pretty proud of it. I also made a button. Uh, so I like doing stuff like that. And then I think I also, one of the things that I really like in campaigns that I've actually volunteered for in real life is doing voter outreach. So that's where you just talk to people. Sometimes you call them on the phone. Sometimes you're just meeting them in person and asking them like, what issues do they care about? What are they following in the election? Voter outreach. That's a very important part of the book. And you have to read the book to find out why. The kids are able to do a sort of voter outreach that they wouldn't be able to do if they were adults. And that's one of the things I really like about this book. It's not just like, oh, here are kids doing something that usually adults do. It's like, here are kids doing something in a way that adults would never in a million years be able to do. They're bringing like a special ability to it because they're kids. So Lila, Maddie finds out that she's good at other things other than art, doesn't she? She goes into the book, again, really thinking that art is the only skill that she has. She doesn't get good grades. She doesn't really have a lot of friends at school. She just sort of always feels like she's doing school wrong. Then as she organizes this campaign, and again, she doesn't set out to organize a political campaign. She's not trying to get involved in politics. All she's trying to do is save art class for herself. But along the way, in order to make that happen, she winds up running a, like a really good, successful political campaign, and she forms a community with a bunch of kids at her school who otherwise she never would have talked to. And so what she finds out is that she thought all she could do was art, uh, but then it turns out that she also is a pretty great political organizer and actually really good at team projects in a way that she hadn't known, and like she's a really good leader. I'm sure our viewers have been inspired by our little conversation about uh, elections, but I'm sure they'll really be inspired after they read the campaign. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Rocco. Vote for Janet. So remember, until next time, read a book in any format.